Welcome back to the channel guys and in this video we are in Pontefract visiting a two bed end of terrace property and we're going to work out whether we're going to rent it, flip it, live in it or avoid it. Let's jump straight in and get started with the video. cool today so the first thing that you notice coming in here and i think it's really important to be careful of this in property is the shape of the rooms now with end of terraces especially on streets they don't typically go completely perpendicular to each other or parallel to each other sorry so what happens is they're slightly triangular fortunately with this property even at the most narrow end it's not drastically different so as we're going around this property if we get a bit of a scan got some really cool features like this but in general it's what you might think of as a buy to let property about 10 15 years ago magnolia everywhere cheap carpets no underlay whatsoever which i know you can't see when you walk in a property but you can feel it you know when you're walking on those and it's quite spongy if you like so the quality is not there. It has got central heating, it's, it's, everything's fine. And actually there was a tenant living here until recently. So technically for the area, you could rent it out, but my gut feeling is it could really do with a nice little tartar, which follows through into the kitchen. So in the kitchen right now, and as you can see, it's, Ooh, sticky um, but <laughs> a bit old school but still practical and usable and I think this is really where it comes down to understanding your area because honestly it depends on what mindset you've got you could look at this kitchen and go actually it's absolutely fine the worktops are solid everything works or you could rip it out start again and do a bit of a tartar and for me it's strongly dependent on the tenant type in the area now I know that this property was rented for a 525 pounds but if the property's done up it jumps all the way up to 750 to 800 pounds which is quite a staggering difference and it really comes down to the statistics so I really like using property data um, for this and we'll put a link in below an affiliate link where I get about three pence if you use it but it, it really helps understand. So the average across the UK is 60% home ownership. And this area is 75% home ownership and only 25% with private rental and social housing. The average in the UK being 21% private housing, 19% social. What does that mean? A complete lack of supply in the area of rental properties. And of course, a real strong capital growth prospects being with uh, more than average or 15% higher than average capital growth and um, for home ownership. So for me, whilst the kitchen is fine as is, again, if it's my property i probably rip it out and really freshen it up to have a great look for the tenant so we're coming into the back of the house now and you're very fortunate in that you can only see this bathroom small bathroom see the bathroom i can smell it and obviously the water shaft somebody's done their business and you can't flush it so it's a small room and you might go this is really weird and the first thing that people think is how much is it going to cost to put the bathroom upstairs and this is so important to understand the street and what's regular so on this street it is completely normal to have the bathroom downstairs personally i think it's really weird because why would you want the bathroom next to the kitchen it's a bit it's just weird right but it's a small room, it is what it is, and it represents everything else on the street. But as you can probably see, needs a tartar, wood ceilings, bit grim, and this is tacky as hell. So I'd definitely be ripping this out and starting again. I could definitely feel leg session from yesterday. So as stairs go, not actually that bad in the grand scheme of things. It's very small, and I was saying this earlier, how narrow it is. It's all single bedroom and then going from front to back. But even coming out the stairs, like I'm not the widest guy in the world, but everything just seems a little bit tight. Again, in this bedroom, very basic, it's dingy, and it's hard to believe that this was rented out in this condition. But again, you don't know how long the tenant is and how much of this sort of thing was actually caused by the tenant. So again, I don't know if you can actually see it in camera. Maybe if you go back, Liz, you can see the room sort of coming in at an angle. So if that's pretty much 90 degrees from here, as you're coming in, there's it. <laughs> that's a bad idea. There's cobwebs. <laughs> Cobwebs. 
cobwebs already. <coughs> Voice broke there. Um, but it does get narrower as it goes back. Again, completely normal in the area. So think about this room, for example. Where are you putting the bed? It's a large double room, right? Can you put it right in the corner? No, you can't. So let's go through to the back bedroom now and see how that's impacted. So as we come into this back bedroom, you can hear it's a bit echoey, but again, it's as a size, quite a decent size double room. You really need to decide if this is gonna get used as a double room or not. So size-wise, definitely a double. Shape-wise, it kind of gets a little bit restricted. And what's interesting is this secret room as we go upstairs. So this is the secret room, and oh my God, you feel like a <laughs> summit of a mountain. And honestly, you're gonna think I'm so dramatic on camera, but I did legs yesterday, and this is friggin' ridiculous. <laughs> that's actually ridiculous that's probably the most crazy stairs i've been up and but you've got this attic space and there's when you look at this you need to look at the regulation so when people have done loft conversions it's come under a lot of sort of under the microscope if you like or the magnifying glass and it's getting looked at more and more because actually if it was done before a certain point in time you don't need to have certain regulations. It's just assumed that you had it. Now this, in order to get access to this room, you're having to go through another bedroom. So could it be reconfigured to be an official bedroom? Yes, that would cost some money, but more than likely not. So what can it be used for? Well, it can be used for pretty much any, everything. It could be a little games room, it could be a storage space. Um, but what's important here is it is not a three bedroom property. Even though this could comfortably be a bedroom, it is not one. It can't be classified. And when you're renting out this property, it is rented as a two bed, not a three bed. It's a nice little additional space though. And I personally would prefer it like this. If you thought of visualize this as a loft, it's a lot better being like this with some actual access, despite the leg destroying stairs. And I'm not being a little bitch. It's, it's not fair because I've got bigger feet than you. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> That's actually not even funny. <laughs> That's actually worse than I thought. It is leg destroying stairs um, rather than a loft space. I think it's pretty good. Something to bear in mind is does it impact the rent? So, would it impact the, the sale price? <laughs> Marginally, like it, it won't really impact it that much. But as a rental space, could you squeeze an extra 50, 100 pounds a month for the additional space? Yeah, I think so. And as a tenant, or if I were a tenant, I personally would happy, pay, happily pay an extra 50, 100 quid for that extra storage space. So let's talk through the numbers. This property in particular was a direct to vendor off market property deal, and it needed to be a cash purchase. So we got it through Google ads, which is a paid platform. And often nowadays, because the market is so hot, if you're going to get any form of discount on it, you need to be quick, therefore it needs to be cash. And in the current standard, this is worth around 110,000, apparently. That had a, a agent valuation on it. Personally, I think it's a little bit toppy. We were able to get it for 96,000 pounds. Now, again, that's gonna be cash. Obviously, you've got stamp duty at just over two grand. You've got your broker fees of 500. You've got your legal fees, which all in will be about 1,200 for this property. And that brings you in 100,500 pounds. And then you need to decide about the refurbishment. So as I said, this was tenanted at 595. That's a solid rental return, you know, nearly 600 pounds for 100 grand all in, give or take. That's pretty solid on an annual basis. But if you look at it from a refurbishment point of view, what would you attract? Now, people naturally assume by spending money on it, it will increase the rentals. Well, number one, that's not a fair assumption. That doesn't always happen. And number two, that's not the only benefit. If you refurbish a property, yes, you hope it brings in more rent, but actually you massively reduce void periods because you're going to attract tenants a lot quicker. You typically will attract a better tenant type and somebody that's gonna make your house their home. And so if you moved into it, just think logically, if you moved into a property where it's really like your home, you're more likely to treat it as such, stay longer and pay a higher rent. 
Interestingly, by putting in the money, it would cost £17,000, give or take, to get this to a really good standard. Now, that will fluctuate, especially with what's been happening over the last couple of years. If you're buying right now and thinking it's going to be different or bang on, you're going to be in for a shot. But that £17,000 will increase the rent to £750. And my gut is, especially with things like this throughout the property, I'd spend the money because I want to feel proud about the asset that I'm putting out there and creating a home for somebody. And that would end up giving around an 11.7% return on the money after refinance, hitting an end valuation of between 115 and 120,000 pounds. So we're going to end up leaving in on refinance about 30 grand and getting about 11.7% return on that. Not bad. So whilst that's a phenomenal return on investment, it's not all good news. Here are three things that are bad about this property. So the first bad thing that I notice is the shape of the rooms. I don't know if you can see it on here, but it's, it's just not at 90 degrees that you'd ideally want. And the issue with that is whilst the rooms actually aren't that bad of a size, it really stops you visualizing where the bed's gonna go and things like that. So often once you've refurbished a property and you're gonna sell it or rent it, you might dress the property. But with oddly shaped properties, I probably wouldn't dress it because actually it points it out and accentuates all of those little issues. Thankfully, it's not like a ridiculous triangle, but it is definitely something that's gonna impact the rentability of this property. The second thing is the bathroom being at the back of the house. Now, I know I said it's actually normal in this area, but I find it really difficult to break through the psychology of it, you know, because where, where I'm from is just not normal at all. And I wonder actually, are people bothered at all? I just think logically, think of the end user, the buyer, uh, at the end or the renter at the end. And if you could spend 750 renting, would you rent one with a downstairs toilet or you found one the exact same price with one upstairs? I think it's fairly logical. I always think about like, you know, it, I'm not a particularly sociable person, but say I had a friend and then I brought them round and I was entertaining them and I want to do my business. It's a bit weird bringing them in the kitchen, entertaining them and then just like, right, give me five minutes going back here. And then also in the mornings, if you're gonna get your morning shower, you have to get up, grab your towel, come downstairs, assuming somebody lives with you, I don't know, maybe they're having their morning coffee and you're having to walk through the kitchen to have a shower to then walk through the house to go upstairs. It's, it's just not ideal. So I'm gonna cheat on this one and use it as one bad and good thing is the amount of space available. And this is both at the back and the front. It's kind of like the front is the back garden. You'll understand when you have a look at it now, but is not a lot of space and why is it bad well i find when you've got spaces like this the same as the shape of the house it's harder to make a house a home and so you need to focus on doing some small things so there's just not i mean like i'm i'm not a tall guy maybe like five nine ambitiously one of those guys is five eight and a half really and rounded up but that's not a lot of space back here um, and the reason i like that is from a rental perspective or if you were going to live here the maintenance is really low and actually what i do like and we'll have a quick look at next doors on this you can do something really quite quirky and nice with the space so the downside is there's small and not a lot to do with it and the good side is it's small and not a lot to do with it it's not all bad news though here are three good things that i like about this property so to reiterate my first point is it's very simple and easily maintained Maintained. So the garden small, the outside space, there's no grass in the back garden, which makes it easy. And even throughout the property, it's just a solid property, it's simple throughout, which means that once any works are done, it should be really easy to maintain on an ongoing basis. Great to live in and great as a rental. The second thing I really like about this property is location. And I both mean visually and statistically. So visually, there's quite a lot going on around there. So a bit of countryside in the background, some new builds, uh, some nice sort of amenities in the area, good access infrastructure, etc. But also statistically, so just as a reminder, around 30% of the UK is owned outright, owner occupier. 30% is owned with a mortgage, 21% private landlord and 19% social housing. Whereas in this area of Pontefract, 75% of it is owner occupier okay so that's 15 percent more than the national average 
What does that mean? More people looking to buy than is available. And what that means for house prices is over the long term, it's going up. And then with 25% private rental and social housing, there is a lack of rental property in the area. And that is the perfect storm for increases in rentals and long-term return on capital employed. The third and final thing I like about this property is the room sizes and the property in general. So yes, it's a bit of a weird shape, but it's a solid, boring house. And if you've heard me say it, it's boring, vanilla, buy to let and what i mean by that is there's nothing on the roof it's all solid throughout the entire property and so yes does it need modernization absolutely does somebody need to flush that toilet absolutely but once that's all done it's actually going to create a really nice place for somebody to live in and for me that just makes it really good so you can work hard enough to not have to work hard set and forget and watch the rental coming in or sell it on for a nice profit so the big question is is, am I going to rent it, flip in it, live in it, or avoid it? Well, I'm not going to avoid it, although if it were more triangular, maybe I'd stay away with the irregularity of it, but I think it makes a really solid property. Am I going to live in it? No, it's not for me, and one, the area is outside of my area to, to live in, but more, it's not the sort of property that I personally feel I could make my home, especially with the bathroom downstairs, it's just not for me. Then it really comes down to, would I flip it on or would I rent it? Well, with the margin that's in it for a flip, you really wanna get that 15% margin at the end and the numbers just don't take account of that unless I was doing some sort of assisted sale. So that leaves buying it to rent out. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. But actually, it's not for me this one. This is for one of my APG, Aspire Property Group clients. And so they've paid me to find them this property, negotiate on their behalf and take care of everything for them, which I'm really excited by. So they're gonna end up on refinance, leaving in about 30,000 pounds. They're gonna net 300 pound a month, which gives them roughly an 11.7% return on capital. And that is before capital growth. So they are massively happy with this. So are we. And I'm looking forward to coming back to this property for you to see the end result. Hope you enjoyed that video. A real part of this channel is to show some of the real deals that we're doing on a weekly and monthly basis. If you've got 100k and you want us to build a portfolio for you remotely, put APG in the comments and we'll get in touch, see what we can do. And if you're new to the channel and you want to find out more about property investment and scaling your property portfolio, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and on your way out click the like button and I'll see you in the next video <sighs> so you don't need Bob the Builder <laughs>